CodeKit makes it really easy to bundle modern JavaScript. Here I have a really simple project that's just a single HTML file and one JavaScript file here. Both of these compile into a build folder, so that's where all of my output will go. Let's take a look at those two files. Index.html is really simple. I have one h1 element here with an ID of target, but no content yet. And then I'm just including my script on the page. And again, because I use a build folder, the path here is just the same as the path between the files here. Now, if I go over to main.js, also really simple. I have a document ready handler from jQuery, and I'm just using the HTML function to change the content of that h1 element that has the target ID. Now you'll notice that jQuery is nowhere to be found here. I don't have a separate script tag on the page here and nothing in main.js, so this website won't work because jQuery is currently missing. And sure enough, if I preview it in Safari, nothing is in that h1 tag, it's all just blank. Well, we could add another script tag here and import jQuery, which is already installed in the project in the node modules folder. I installed jQuery using npm here, but I also could have done it with Bower. But let's use some bundling. So over in main.js, I'll add a single line to the top of this file, import dollar sign from jQuery. And back in CodeKit, I'll select main.js and change the ES6 bundle format to IIFE, which stands for Immediately Invoked Function Expression. This is the format you want to use when you're targeting web browsers. And what it does basically is take all the code in here, including your imported code, dump it into one big function, and then call that function at the end of the file. So with that bundle format selected, back in my editor, I'll hit command S to save main.js. CodeKit will bundle everything behind the scenes, and you can see immediately that jQuery is now working, and my h1 element has the text that I told it to have. Now you'll notice I didn't supply any kind of file path in my import statement here. I just wrote jQuery, the module name, and left the rest up to CodeKit. Behind the scenes, what happens is when you install something using npm or Bower in a node modules folder or Bower components folder, CodeKit will walk through those folders and read package.json files or bower.json files to find the actual file that matches this module name. Here, that's jQuery.js buried inside this node modules folder. Now, this will work for any packages that you install via npm or bower as long as those packages offer ES6 modules. You can also bundle your own JavaScript files, not just third-party modules from npm or bower. For example, here's a project with main.js that imports two other files, sub.js and data.json. In my editor, data.json is really simple. It's an object with two properties, name and age. And then sub.js has one function called log stuff that just prints to the console. But notice that I have this extra keyword export in front of function here. This is required. It's the golden rule of JavaScript bundling. Before you can import something, you have to export that thing. So here I'm telling the bundler, hey, this function log stuff is going to be lifted out of this file. That's what export means. Over in main.js, just like I did for jQuery, I'm importing that keyword log stuff, the function I defined in the other file, sub.js, and I'm importing name and age from data.json. Notice though that unlike jQuery, now I'm providing a path, a relative path that starts with period slash. If sub.js were in some other folder, I might add components like this, just like you would with any other path. But if you omit this period slash, the whole thing won't work. Because the period slash tells the bundler in CodeKit, hey, this thing called sub.js is not a module that you will find in one of those special folders, node modules or Bower components. This is a file that I wrote myself, and you can find it relative to main.js at this path. You must start with period slash or it won't work. Notice below, I'm just using name and age. Now, if we go to output.js, which I've already created by compiling that file, you'll see that I wrap everything in a big function. And here are the components from data.json, the name and age. And I'm just using them in console log statements, just like I did in main.js. But you'll notice something's missing. Here, I defined log stuff, right? This function that logs important stuff to the console. And in main.js, I imported it but it's nowhere to be found in my output file. This is tree shaking in action. The bundler in CodeKit noticed that, yeah, you imported log stuff, but you never used it anywhere in this file. So it got dropped from the output file output.js. If I were to add a use of log stuff down here, then it would carry over and be in my final bundled file. So remember, use it or lose it. ESLint supports syntax checking JavaScript modules, but there's a couple things to know. 
Here I've selected ESLint as my syntax checker for main.js, and I've already run it. So if I switch to the log, we can see that it found three issues in main.js and one issue in sub.js here. Now let's say that I don't care about issues in sub.js. Maybe it's not my code, whatever. I just don't want to see these problems. And that's easy to hide. I just go to the main files list, select the base file, come to the linked files pane, and find my import sub.js. Uncheck the shield. Now, when this file is processed, CodeKit will not syntax check sub.js or any files further down the tree, any that are imported by sub.js. But there's a faster way to do this. So instead of coming here manually on checking the box, wherever I have my import statement that brings in sub.js, I can just add a special comment, quiet, next to it. Now I'll save the file, and we can see that CodeKit presents errors only for the main file, main.js. The sub ones are no longer there, and if I come back to the files list, we can see that sub.js is automatically unchecked for me because of the quiet keyword. 